Chapter Five of *The Adopting of Rosa Marie* by Carol Watson Rankin. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Returning Rosa Marie. Early the next morning, Jean, needing her thimble to sew on a vitally necessary button, ran to the supposedly empty cottage to get it. Taking the short cut through the Tucker's backyard, she found Betty feeding Billy, the seagull, one of Bob's numerous pets. Billy always wakes everybody up crying for his breakfast, explained thoughtful little Betty. Bob's spending a week at the Ormsby's camp, so I have to get up to feed Billy so father can sleep. Why don't the other boys do it? Mercy! They'd sleep through anything. Going to the cottage? Yes, come with me, returned Jean, while I get my thimble. It's so big that it almost takes two to carry it. All right, laughed Betty, crawling through the hole in the fence. Jean's thimble was a standing joke. A stout and prudent godmother had bestowed a very large one on the little girl, so that Jean would be in no danger of outgrowing the gift. Jean was now living in hopes of some time growing big enough to fit the thimble. Why, exclaimed Jean, after a brief search, the key isn't under the doormat. Where do you suppose it's gone? Here it is in the door, but how in the world did it get there? I locked the door myself last night and tucked the key under the mat. I know I did. I saw you do it, corroborated Jean. Perhaps Marjorie's inside. It isn't Mabel, anyway. She's always the last one up. Mercy me, said Betty, who had been peeking into the different rooms to see if Marjorie were inside. Come here, Jean. Look at this. This was brown little Rosa Marie sitting up in the middle of the pink and white spare room bed. Like, as Betty put it, a brown bee in the heart of a rose. Her small dark countenance was absolutely expressionless, so there was no way of discovering what she thought about it all. My sakes, exclaimed Jean with indignation. That lazy Mabel never took her home, after all. Why, we'll have a whole bunch of wild Indians coming to scalp us right after breakfast. How could she have been so careless? This is the worst she's done yet. But it's just like Mabel, said Betty, giving vent for once to her disapproval of Mabel's thoughtlessness. She likes things ever so much at first. Then she simply forgets that they ever existed. Who forgets? demanded Mabel, bouncing in at the front door. You, returned Jean and Betty with one accusing voice. Prove it. You forgot to take Rosa Marie home last night. I never did. I took her every inch of the way home, stayed with her all alone in the dark for pretty nearly a year, and then had to bring her all the way back again, walking in her sleep. So there now. But why in the world didn't you leave her with her own folks? Her horrid mother wasn't there, and between them I didn't get any supper and only a little sleep. But what are you going to do? queried astonished Jean. After she drinks this quart of milk, explained Mabel, I'm going to take her home again. Where did you get so much milk? asked Betty suspiciously. Mabel colored furiously. I begged it from the milkman, she confessed. That's why I'm up so early. I've been sitting on our kitchen doorstep for two hours waiting for him to come. Mabel spent all that day industriously returning Rosa Marie to a home that had locked its doors against her. No pretty, dark French mother stood in the doorway. No tall, dark man wandered about the yard. No neighbor came from the tumbling houses across the street to explain the woman's puzzling absence. It proved a most tiresome day. Mabel was not only mentally weary from trying to solve the mystery, but physically tired also from dragging Rosa Marie up and down the hill between Dandelion Cottage and the child's deserted home. The girls went with her once, but, having satisfied their curiosity as to Rosa Marie's abiding place, turned their attention to pleasanter tasks. Walking with Rosa Marie was too much like traveling with a snail. One such journey was enough. Moreover, Mabel's pride had suffered. A grinning boy, looking from plump Mabel's ruddy countenance to fat Rosa Marie's expressionless brown one, had asked wickedly, Is that your sister? You look enough alike to be twins. After that, Mabel feared that other persons might mistake the small brown person for a relative of hers, or worse yet, mistake her for an Indian. Goodness me, groaned Mabel, toiling homeward from her second trip. It was hard enough to borrow a baby, but it's enough sight worse getting rid of one afterwards. There's one thing certain, I'll never borrow another. Late in the day, Mabel thought of Mrs. Maloney, the egg woman. Perhaps she would know what had become of Rosa Marie's vanished mother. Dropping Rosa Marie inside the gate, Mabel knocked at Mrs. Maloney's door. The folks that lived in the shanty beyant? asked Mrs. Maloney. Sure, darling, nobody's lived there for years and years, save gypsies and tramps and such like. But day before yesterday, no, yesterday morning, I saw a young French woman. 
a black-eyed gal wid two long braids and wan small injun sure oi know the wan you mane her man injun pete died a month ago some two days after they came back to the shack where is she now asked mabel how would oi be after knowin she came and she went like the rest of them there was a man not a gentleman and not exactly a tramp talking to her yesterday perhaps you know where he is i couldn't find anybody depend upon it said mrs maloney easily she's gone with him she's mrs somebody else by now and good riddance to the pair of them but objected mabel drawing the branches of the small shrub aside and disclosing rosa marie sprawled on the ground behind it she left her baby the nation she did gasped mrs maloney for once surprised out of her serenity would ye think of that now i've been thinking of it returned mabel miserably and i don't know what in the world to do you see she left the baby with me take her home would ye advised mrs maloney hastily so hastily that it looked as if the irish woman feared that she might be asked to mother rosa marie i'll keep an eye on the shack for ye if that good-for-nothing black-haired wan comes back oi'll be up with the news in two shakes of a dead lamb's tail so oi will in the main time be a mother to that innocent babe yourself she needs one if ever a child did i've been that for two whole days now groaned mabel that's right that's right encouraged mrs maloney ye were just cut out for that same good luck go with ye rosa marie spent a second night in the spare room of dandelion cottage she at least seemed utterly indifferent as to her fate End of chapter five